said we, uh, Hazur did kindly spoke about the salvation, but I would like to know uh, the meaning of sins in, uh, from the Islamic point of view. Sin has a very wide meaning, in fact. It's not born out of Sharia. Sharia is born to indicate sin. So this is the most important difference between the Islamic understanding of sin and uh, understanding of sin otherwise, elsewhere. So, the act in itself is not sin. The circumstances will make it either a sin or uh, a good act. So there's another thing about the sin which has to be noted. I'll explain that as I continue to build this point further. The sin in relation to man has always been sin. Whether the Sharia was revealed or not, whether there was a law or not, was completely irrelevant to the issue of the ugliness of an act which was sin. If anybody hurt anyone else, any human, hurt anyone else without justification, this could be either madness or sin. For that there was no law needed to tell anybody. So the concept of sin is born much before the law is delivered to man. And it is born out of the awareness of hum human awareness of bad things and good things. Sin is born with the birth of man. Sin is born with the new consciousness which is created with the coming into being of humans. That consciousness is different from the consciousness, conscience of the animals. The animals when they hurt each other, when they eat each other, the flesh of other animals, I mean, they do it out of instinctive compulsions. There is no sin involved, so no conscience. The act is there of dividing somebody else and destroying life for the purpose of survival. The, her own, its own devour, devouring and destroying life, for, not for the purpose of destruction, but for the purpose of gaining life of the one who destroys it. So when the animal kills another animal, he does not do it with the purpose of creating death. He does it with the purpose of gaining life. So this again is a very minute difference between human and animal behavior. There are some animals who are created to, to, they are created to give man a lesson. And there are very few such animals who give the lesson in destructivity. So they are destructive animals. They rampage things, they destroy things. And this, but this is not how all the animals are made. So they, yet they are not sinful. Because they don't know what they are doing. It is within them to do it in a, in a manner that it does not hurt or blemish their conscience in the least. So. Although there are a few examples, exceptions of this case, but normally when the lion kills, it does not kill for the sake of killing. Death is not even remotely in his mind. It is his own life which is in his mind. So he wants to gain life. And he does not realize whether he does not care whether he kills others to gain his life or not because this distinction is not in him. It's not created in him. So the act may be 
common, which an act may be common between animals and humans, but uh, the nature of that act would different wide, we would differ widely. So I have given you some examples of animal behavior which may appear to you bad, looking from your vantage point, but which is not bad at all, and it doesn't seem bad, and they know it, and they are adjusted to it, it's within them. But in humans, the moment a human is born, simultaneously is born the sense of right and wrong. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ عَلَّمَهُ الْبَيَانِ Al-bayan here does not only refer to his power of speech. Al-bayan is a power of discrimination. To discriminate one thing from the other, good from bad. So this bayan is a very wide word and Arabic dictionary is fully supports this meaning what I'm telling you that it may also mean, and perhaps initially it means, before it can be interpreted as speech, it means the discrimination. Now animals, if they want to say something to others, they may make noises, but they cannot clearly express themselves. So bayan is, in fact, initially, the power to discriminate, discriminate between one thing and the other. So with bayan, when it develops, one can tell others that this is this and that is that. So the bayan in the meaning of speech is a secondary production. The original meaning of bayan is the distinction within man which is born to tell him without an outside informer that this thing is good and that is bad. So whether prophets come to uh, come with, with law to inform man from God that if you do this that will be sinful, if you do that that will be good. Much before that, remember this, Right with the birth of humans, the sense is born. So the St. Paul's philosophy is, is, is neither here nor there. It has no substance whatsoever. But I'll turn to the subject once again after this much is translation. This much is translated because it's a complex subject and uh, I'm afraid if I take too long, you may begin to miss parts here and parts there. Huh? That's right. <coughs> so, the acts by themselves can be neither sin nor goodness. Any acts performed by animal life, I mean. But when the cons consciousness of their nature is born, with that the concept of sin is born automatically. When, as I said, in, among humans, we know that he has been provided that conscience which pricks him at the moment he does something wrong. So, an animal does not know the meaning of death except what he accepts as a normal, normal way of life. But humans know the meaning of death. And when they inflict death, they know it is a crime. No book has, has, to, be, has to descend to tell them this is a crime. When they hurt others, their conscience has developed to a degree that they do not feel only the hurts of their own suffering, but they also feel the suffering of others. So when they know that this is suffering, which they are inflicting on others, they also know that it is a crime. When they rob others of their property, when the animals do, 
it does not make them any, make any difference to their conscience because it is not viewed as a crime by the animals. But the humans, when they rob others of their property, they know this is wrong because when theirs is robbed, then they feel it. So through this reciprocal system, God has gradually evolved humans out of life, out of animal life. Slowly and steadily the conscience is born. With that conscience, man or humans come into being. With that the coming into being comes into being the sin, the goodness, the right and wrong. But this is so far in relation to humans, in relation to humans, in relation to humans, I mean, in relation to each other, they understand right and wrong. So this is, it remains a sin of society which punishes the society itself. But the punishment of God separate from this does not come into play. It would be at a later stage. So it's a crime, but it will acquire the sense of sin when this crime is, def is prohibited to be committed by God. So what is born with the Sharia is not the sin. What is born with the Sharia is the realization that if I commit this, I'm going to be punished. So the concept of punishment or reward are born with, uh, uh, with the Sharia, not the sin or crime itself. So when the law of God tells humans, look here, you have done enough folly. You have rendered your society into hell by transgressing against each other, by committing crimes against each other. For your own sake, for improving your conditions, for improving the state of the society, we declare it forbidden from another angle as well. We are the Creator and we tell you, you can do it and you will suffer. Of course, you have been suffering from the consequences. But this time it will be double punishment. God will be angry and you will move, go away from God instead of moving towards Him. And also you will be punished not only in this life but in the hereafter. So this is the human relationship when it turns into sin against God as well. What Sharia does apart from what I have already said, is that it helps human awareness evolve to higher levels of consciousness. So conscience becomes more, uh, you know, more, more refined than before. Conscience becomes a conscious act in humans in that case. So this development of human conscience to a state of consciousness to good and bad is done by Sharia. And the same act which may be considered sin from one angle begins to appear as an act of goodness from another angle. It all depends on the purpose of creation. And it is here that the Quran or other books come to guide the mankind. Now I'll give the same example to make this complex issue understandable, which I gave earlier in relation to animal behavior. I said lions do not kill for the sake of causing death. They kill for the sake of gaining life. This is a rule which applies in almost every animal claim. They want to kill because of saving life. But in more <coughs> advanced states where, for instance, the apes and the monkeys, 
know that an, a tribe, rival tribe, would attack them. So they become defense conscious and they attack to preempt an attack upon themselves. So there too the purpose is not to create death, it's to, to save their lives, not by eating their flesh, but by avoiding their harm. So in this way, Allah helps human conscience or animal conscience develop to more refined forms. But at the same time, it makes man realize that the act in itself is neither good nor bad. It all depends on why it was done and how it was done. So it is here that the Sharia comes to help him further. Allah tells us to kill is bad, but to kill for the sake of saving life is not bad. But only if it is fully under the advice from God, what should you eat, what you should not eat, what you should kill, what you should not kill, because man does not know many of these areas of uh, his involvement in murder or killing. It could be a useless killing, which could become a sin. It could be a purposeful killing, which would become an act of survival or goodness. Now, apply this situation to a person who kills animals which he wants to utilize for his own survival by eating the flesh of any animal, man gains life. So for that purpose, killing is de declared not a sin, but a good act. Eat of the flesh of these animals which God has made permissible and enjoy yourself. Aniya Maria, there is no harm. But when you begin to kill life without purpose, then it becomes a crime. So Ahazus strictly forbade useless killing of things which do not give you any do not bring you any harm. So here in the light of Sharia one begins to see things which previously he could not by himself. Now he realizes that if he eats something, kills something for a genuine need of his own, then because the end is product in the mind is life, not death, death happens to be on the way to gaining life. So it's not a crime. But if you do not gain life out of death, then death becomes a crime. So you see, fine, refined teachings, divine teachings, come to be born and the Sharia begins to develop. In the same sense, defensive warfare is the concept of defensive warfare comes into to, it comes into play or it gets born. Murder is wrong because murder is death, inflicting death upon others. But if you murder for the sake of guarding your own life, then that murder is not only a permissible, it becomes an act of extreme goodness sometimes. So that is why Qital is highly praised in the Holy Quran. But not just the murderous act of causing death. Al-Qital, which is defensive throughout the Holy Quran, you read, it's a defensive Qital. Their better lives are protected and lesser, worse type of, types of life are slaughtered at the uh, altar of the better life. So here again, it is not death, this is uh, the purpose of this exercise. It is the life and life of a higher order whose protection is meant in jihad. So jihad, although it is murder, becomes a very pious act because new meanings are added to the same exercise. So the Holy Quran says at one place, 
that because when Cain murdered his brother Abel, God made it, uh, ever since God declared it as a law, that if you murder one man, it will be murdering the whole world. It will be a crime of that nature. Yet, in the Quran you read, when you strike against the enemy, strike mercilessly. Destroy them, so that with them, the evil is destroyed. And those who are good, they have a fair chance of survival. So this is what I meant, a new meaning is added to the acts of evil and acts of goodness. Not ordinary meaning, meaning but higher meaning. So the Sharia is released or revealed to improve the quality of life and the quality of mind and the quality of human conscience. So this is made very clear in the Holy Quran in, during the discussion of Al-Qital Fi Sibirillah. The purposes which we can derive from them is, are Number one, that those people whom Bajina declares to be destroyed, they must vanish and they must be destroyed. Because Bajina means a very clear verdict of the conscience that such evil people, if they live, they will destroy the quality of life on earth. They will be a terror for the rest of the life. So their murder or their removal is an act of goodness, not an act of crime. That is why the people of Noha were all wiped out from the face of earth. Otherwise, if it was a bad act, it would be, God would become sinful, having destroyed life. But the reason why it was done, it was not to save other people's life. It was to save goodness and to destroy evil because the stage had reached where the Holy Quran told, tells us, God told Noha that all who could become believers, they have become believers. What is left is sheer trash. If they are allowed to survive, they will bear evil, they will spread evil, they will do injustice, they will commit crimes. So what is the purpose of keeping them? What is the purpose of their survival? That is why Allah decided that they must be wiped out and told Noha to pray for this purpose. So Al-Fital, which began, you know, mutual warfare or fight, which began as an ordinary instinctive measure among, uh, instinctive behavior of animals, has now developed to, to a very higher, refined uh, institution. Murder is not only now for the sake of survival of some people. Murder now becomes instrumental for the survival of goodness and destruction of evil. So that is how the Sharia, the book, continues to evolve the concepts of sin and the concept of goodness. Sharia does not create sin or create goodness by itself. It's only the human vantage point which goes on gaining greater vision and depth of vision with the help of Sharia. I think that should be sufficient for the time being because the time is already advanced and this subject is, is rather inexhaustible. Thank you. I also mentioned that this principle is referred to in connection with the battle of Padr. Where the Holy Quran says, Le yahleka man halak wa le yahya man hayya ambayyana. Le yahleka man halaka ambayyana wa yahya my Hayya Ambayana. Hayya Ambayana. 
Now this is the principle to which I referred, is a more evolved form. Those who were destroyed at the Battle of Badr, they were not just destroyed for the sake of defense of Muslims. They were destroyed for the sake of the defense of Bajana, which is the manifest truth. And when the manifest truth required such a people who were its enemy to be destroyed, they were so de decreed to be destroyed. And the Muslims were, were protected just not for the sake of a party in battle, not for the sake of their lives, but because with them would live Bajana. The Yahya man Hayyam Bajana. So this is a more evolved form of the employment of uh, murder for the sake of improving the quality of life.